We've studied the first price and the second price auction, both in the context of private values. But if we have common values, in the sense that the good is worth the same thing to all bidders, but each bidder only has some information about that value. This is fundamentally a different scenario than the context in which we studied the first and second price auctions, where each individual knows exactly what the item is worth to them. In a common value context, the item is worth the same to everybody, it's just that nobody individually knows what that item is worth. A really great example of this is an experiment that one could do, where you have a jar full of coins, and you ask people to have a look at this jar and estimate how much money is in the jar. Everybody's going to look at that and form some opinion as to how much money is in the jar. If you were to ask a very large number of people, in, in all likelihood, the average of everybody's estimate is probably the best predictor of how much money actually is in the jar. However, if you were to auction this jar, then whoever wins this jar is likely to be the person who has the highest estimate. But if you have the highest estimate, it means that your estimate is higher than the average, which means that you probably overpaid for it. This phenomenon is called the winner's curse, and it shows up all over the place. It's a common occurrence in real estate markets. So you have a piece of land, it's worth something in terms of development prospects. I have some estimate as to how much this land might be worth. Someone else has some estimate as to how much this land might be worth in terms of the value it could generate when, when developed. So there might be a bidding war where each of the potential buyers would bid up the price of the property. The one that wins it is the one that has the highest estimate of what that land can generate in terms of value. Again, typically the person who has the highest estimate is probably overestimating. It's the average of the estimate is typically the most accurate predictor. We'll do a, sm a simple analysis of a very, very simplified common values setting. There are two bidders. Each receives some information about the value of the item. So bidder I knows YI, perhaps. The true value of the item is capital Y, which is the sum of Y1 and Y2. So player 1 only knows Y1, bidder 2 only knows Y2. So neither of them knows fully what the value is. They only know a part of it. We'll work with the assumption that Y1 and Y2 are uniformly distributed between 0 and 10. What this means is that the probability that y is less than x for any x is x over 10. Bidder 1 only knows y1. So from bidder 1's perspective, what does he think the expected value of the item is? Well, it's simply the expected value of capital Y, which is the expected value of y1 plus y2. Remember, bidder 1 knows y1, so y1 is a constant, whereas y2 is a random variable from bidder 1's perspective. So it's y1 plus the expected value of y2. If y2 is distributed uniformly over 0 to 10, then the expected value is 5. So that's y1 plus 5. Similarly, the expected value of the item from bidder 2's perspective is y2 plus 5. So let's do a little thought experiment here and suppose that the bidders both bid their valuation and we'll run a first price auction. Remember that if you bid your valuation in a private value first price auction, your payoff is zero. Would that be true here? Should we expect that if each bidder, bidder I, bids YI plus five, would we expect that they would both get payoffs of zero, or at least an expected payoff of zero? Let's see. We'll try this out with an example. Let's say that Y1 is eight, then the bid that player one would submit, if they were submitting their expected valuation, B1 would have to be 13, which is Y1 plus eight. Now let's suppose player two is also bidding B2 equals Y2 plus five. Then the only way that one wins is if this bid 13, which is B1, is bigger than the bid of B2, which is Y2 plus five. Five. That means y2 would have to be smaller than 8. But here's the rub. If y2 is smaller than 8, then the expected value of y2, conditional on it being smaller than 8, is 4. Remember that this says that all the values between 0 and 8 are equally likely, which means that the expected value is the midpoint of 0 and 8, which is 4. So if the expected value of y2 is 4, then conditional on winning, one's expected value is not 13, but actually 12. 
the fact that player one has to decrease his estimate of what the good is worth, conditional on winning, is what we call the winner's curse. So let's try and figure out what the Bayes-Nash equilibrium is of this game. Obviously, bidding your estimate of the valuation is not a Bayes-Nash equilibrium. It turns out that bidding yi for player i is a Bayes-Nash equilibrium. So let's check that. So let's suppose that player 2 plays according to this strategy. So given y1, what is 1's expected payoff from bidding b1? If b1 is higher than y2, which is b2, then player 1 wins. And if player 1 wins, their expected payoff is the expected value of y1 plus y2, which is the valuation of the item, minus b1, which is what the bidder 1 is bidding for the item, and would have to pay, conditional on y2 being less than b1. If y2 is bigger than b1, then player 1 gets zero payoff because they lose the auction. So with the probability y2 bigger than b1, they get payoff zero. So the sum of these two is the expected payoff of player 1 if they bid b1. So this is second term is zero, we won't worry about that, and we'll start simplifying this thing. Now the probability that y2 is less than or equal to b1 is b1 divided by 10. y1 is a constant from the perspective of player 1, so the expectation of y1 is just y1, and b1 is also a constant, so we've got b1, so we're left with y1 plus the expected value of y2 conditional on y2 less than or equal to b1. So conditional on y2 being smaller than b1, the expectation of y2 is b1 over 2. So we have b1 over 10 times y1 plus b1 divided by 2 minus b1. Well, that's just b1 divided by 10 times y1 minus b1 over 2. Now we can solve for the optimal b1 for player 1. So bidder 1 chooses b1 to solve the optimization problem where they choose b1 to maximize b1 divided by 10 times y1 minus b1 divided by 2. The first order condition is y1 divided by 10 minus b1 divided by 10 equals 0, which means that the optimal b1 equals y1. By a symmetric argument, we would find that given that player 1 is bidding y1, player 2 would want to bid y2. What we see here is that when you have to worry about the other person's information in order to know what the value of the item is, you'll bid more cautiously.